question. This is a big question. And it is, what is the goal and purpose of God's plan? It's a big question. What do you think that is? What do you think the answer to that is? Maybe some of you know, maybe some of you don't. But it's to show his glory. Bring glory to God. And God does this in the lives of his people, which is really amazing. And what does it mean for God to show his glory when we talk about God's glory? It means we're talking about his greatness, his goodness, his authority, that he is the creator of everything. And that's what we're talking about and showing his glory. And he uses people to show his glory. And in today's lesson, we are going to talk about just one of those people where he used his glory. This week, we are going to be in the book of Judges. Can you guys tell me where Judges is? Is that Old Testament or is that New Testament? That's right, it's Old Testament. We've got some good Old Testament stories for you guys, for you guys today. But in Judges... This takes place after Joshua has gone in to the promised land. They've defeated the people in the promised land, but they didn't take it. They didn't send everybody out. God instructed them to get rid of everybody that was there before, but they didn't do that. And that's going to cause them a lot of problems. And to help you guys understand what this cycle of problems that the Hebrew people are going through, we have a diagram for you guys that we're going to show you. And I'm going to keep my notes with me so, so that you guys can help me with this. And here's the cycle during Judges. And here we have abandoned, bondage, cried, delivered, and ease. Now, what does that mean? What, are the, what do each of these mean? Abandon says they stop worshiping and obeying God. Okay, so that happens pretty frequently. Bondage is that God let another country come in and take them over because they didn't do what they were supposed to. So another country came in and put them in bondage. Well, of course, being in bondage, the Hebrew people, they cried out to God. And he listened. And they, he delivered them. And then there was a time of ease because they were following God. But guess what, friends? The cycle starts over again where they start to abandon God. And this cycle usually takes about one generation. And the book of Judges takes about 400 years. See, you would think they would learn their lesson the first time, but they didn't. This cycle goes on and on. And we're going to talk about one of the people during this cycle that God used to show his glory. So if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to go to the book of Judges. And to talk about judges, a judge is a person who God placed to lead his people. Now, some of these people were prophets and some of them were not. But this person that we're going to talk about was a prophetess. So in this book, here's what I want you guys to do while I'm reading. We're going to read a couple of verses. We're going to be in Judges chapter 4. So grab your Bible, chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 1 through 3. And we're going to go through these verses, and you guys are going to help me figure out where in this cycle they are. So grab your Bibles. We're going to start in chapter 4. And it says, After Ehud died, the Israelites once again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord handed them over to the power of Jabin. He was a king in Canaan. He ruled in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera. He lived in Horesheth, 
Hagium. I'm not sure if I said that correctly, but bear with me. Jabin used 900 chariots that had some iron parts. He treated the Israelites very badly for 20 years. So they cried out to the Lord for help. So what do you guys think about this? What do, in verse 1, what does it say? They did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So where are they? They abandoned God, right? Let's look at verse 2. What does that say? So the Lord handed them over to the power of Jabin. He was a king, and he treated them badly for 20 years. So where are they at in this cycle? They're in bondage. And then it says, yep, so they're in bondage. So they cried, and they cried out, right? Because 20 years is a long time to be in bondage and to suffer, right? So let's look at where they are right now. So we have a map to kind of help you guys figure out where they are during this time. So this is the region Ephraim. We're going to be discussing some of this region right here because the judge that we're going to be talking about, who God used, her name is Deborah, and she lived in this region right here between Rama and Bethel in this region of Ephraim. So we're going to learn just a little bit more of Deborah. And Deborah was a prophetess, which means she spoke God's truth. So she was a judge. And what is a judge? A judge is someone who kind of helps people with their disputes and disagreements. But then she was also a prophet. So she helped people when they didn't agree on things or they didn't understand things, they would go to her. But then she was also a prophet, so she would also tell God's truth to people. So we're going to skip forward, and we're going to be in verse 8. So here's where, excuse me, we're going to go into verse 6. And here's where we start to see part of our story. Deborah sent for Barak. He was the son of Ebenon. Barak was from Kiddush in the, land of, in the land of Naphtali. And Deborah said to Barak, The Lord, the God of Israel, is giving you a command. He says, Go. Take 10,000 men from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun with you. So let me show you guys where this is. Here's Naphtali. Here's Zebulun. So she's telling him right now, this is what God told me. Go get 10,000 men. This is what God is telling you from these regions. Then lead them up to Mount Tabor. You can't really see it here on the map, but it's right in this area here not far from the Sea of Galilee. So he's supposed to go to Mount Tabor. And God told her to tell Barak, I will lead Sisera into a trap. He is the commander of Jabin's army. Remember Jabin? He's the king that is treating the Hebrew people really, really bad. And Sisera is his commander. He says, I will bring him his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River. There I will hand him over to you. So Deborah, through Deborah, God was going to lure Sisera and his army because this is what God said was going to happen. So she was prophesying and she's telling Barak, this is what God told me to tell you. But here's what Barak said. Here's how he responded in verse 8. He says, if you go with me, I'll go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Hmm. We're going to read just a little bit, just a little bit more, and then we're going to come back to that verse. Deborah says, all right, I'll go with you. 
but because of the way you are doing this, you won't receive any honor. Instead, the Lord will hand Sisera over to a woman. So we're going to stop there for just a second because we're going to go back. Because here, Deborah's telling Barak, here's what God told you. She is, this is what God told me. And I'm telling you. And Barak was kind of like, yeah, I hear you, but I don't know. I'm kind of afraid to go without you. You're God's prophet. So his faith was really little. We have a verse that goes with that. We're going to go to Hebrews. If you want to follow with me, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. And it talks about other judges and Barak being one of them. Because of their faith, they took over the kingdoms they ruled fairly. But he didn't have a lot of faith, did he? Tiny bit of faith. Okay, I believe you, but you have to come with me. Right? So there's another verse that we're going to go into. It's Matthew 17, 20. And some of you guys might have heard this verse before. It says, because your faith is much too small, what I'm about to tell you is true. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, it is enough. So we know in scripture, Barak, he didn't have a lot of faith, but he had a little bit, right? And sometimes, sometimes we don't always have a lot of faith. Sometimes it's a little bit. Sometimes we need to go to that person who is a confidant, who does have a lot of faith that it can encourage us. Sometimes we need those people, right? Sometimes we need those people that have a stronger faith than us. Even though we have just a little bit of faith, and God can still use that. We just learned that in scripture, Matthew 17. Faith like a mustard seed. Tiny. If you've ever seen a mustard seed, it is itty bitty, itty bitty, tiny. And that's sometimes the faith that we need. Well, we're going to go on with our story because there's a lot more that we need to that we need to get into. So friends, join me in chapter 4. We're going to go to verse 9. And let's see what happens in this story. So Deborah went to Kadesh with Barak. There he sent for men from Zebulun and Naphtali. Remember, we saw that just a minute ago. And 10,000 men followed him into battle. Deborah also went with him. So she was there. Then it goes on to say, let me find my verse. So Sisera gathered his 900 chariots that had some iron parts. So these chariots, they're probably looking pretty scary. They had iron and stuff. They weren't just made of wood. He had 900 of these. Woo, that's got to be scary. Because I'm pretty sure the Hebrews, they probably didn't have chariots like that. He also gathered together all his men, and he brought them from Harosheth Haggium to the Kishon River. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, today the Lord will hand Sisera over to you. Hasn't the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down to Mount Tabor. His 10,000 men followed him. As Barak's men marched out, the Lord drove Sisera's army away from the field of battle. The Lord scattered all these chariots, all his chariots, and Barak's men struck them down with their swords. Sisera got down from his chariot, and he ran away. But the rest of them, they were all gone. There were no more of Sisera's army left. So God delivered them from that. But guess what? That's not where the story ends. He continues. He's used Deborah because she prophesied of what was going to happen. So we're going to skip down just a few more verses. Go to verse 17 because here's the rest of the story, friends. This is interesting. But Sisera ran away on foot and he ran to the tent of Jael. 
he ran to the tent of a woman. She was the wife of Heber, the Kenite. And Sisera ran there because there was a treaty between Heber's family and Jabin, the king of Hazar. So he's going there because he's thinking he's going to hide out and he's going to be safe. He's hiding. He's safe now. So he thought. Jael went out to meet Sisera. Come in, sir, she said. Come right in. Don't be afraid. Come on inside. Then she covered him with a blanket. He said, I'm thirsty. So instead of giving him water, she gave him milk. So she was being really nice to him, right? He said he was thirsty. I'm going to go up and give you one up. Not just water, I'm going to give you some milk. And then she covered him up again. And then Sisera told her, go stand in the doorway because people are looking for me. And if anybody comes here, just say no, no one's here. She says, okay. And she did just that. She went to the door. But guess what? Barak came looking for him. But guess what Jael did? She took a tent stake and she killed Sisera. And then she finds out Barak is there. She comes in, hey, come here, come here. Here's the man you're looking for. And he's dead. Remember, Deborah prophesied. She told Barak, Sisera is going to die. God is going to hand him over to you. But because you, weren't, you didn't have enough faith to do this on your own, God's going to use a woman. And that's exactly what he did. He used a woman. He used Deborah. He used Jael. Jael. But he also used Barak, even in his little faith. God showed his glory. And there's a lot of this story, friends, and there's even more to it. But here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to go to the book of Judges in chapter 4. Read through this and act this out. Maybe grab your mom or your dad or one of your siblings, friends, and act this story out. Because there's part of the story that I didn't tell you. So here's a little activity I have for you. Because it says the JL took a, ta a stake, a tent stake, to kill Sisera. But the Bible is very specific in how she did that. So friends, I would like for you to go to chapter 4, and you can start reading in verse 17. I'm not going to tell you which verse it is. You've got to read a couple of verses to figure it out. And then come back and tell Pastor Lori or me just how she killed them. Okay? So that's part of your activity. And then have the activity to act this out. And think about this. Wait, are they allowed to kill anybody? We are not, you're not allowed to kill anybody. You can pretend, <laughs> but don't really kill anybody. But I think you guys are going to find this story really interesting because it's not one that we go over very often. And uh, the Bible, it was very specific in how J.L. killed Sisera. But the point is, friends, that God told Deborah what was going to happen, and she believed him. Barak came in. He had a little bit of faith. I'll do it, but you've got to do it with me. And God used a woman, just like Deborah said. God followed through with his word. It goes back to our cycle over here. We talked about the Israelites being abandoned. They abandoned God. Then they're in bondage. They cry out, and God delivers them. And then there's a time of ease. You know what, friends? That's a lot like us. You know, sometimes we live our lives not focused on God and who he is. Now, maybe we're not living in bondage by another kingdom, but sometimes we, we're living in this life of sin, and it feels yucky. doesn't feel good, does it? And then we start to cry out to God, God, help me. What, what am I doing wrong? Help me. I don't understand. I made a bad choice. 
Friends, this, this is why we have the Holy Spirit. This is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Because he can make, help you make good choices. And then what do we do? God brings us out of that yucky, sinful feeling. When we come to him, we tell him what we've done and we ask for forgiveness. Then we're delivered. And then we have that time of life feels good when we're following God. But guess what? We start that cycle over again. So we're no different than the Hebrews and Judges. Our difference now is we have the Holy Spirit. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They had Judges back then. And we're going to be talking about different Judges these next couple of weeks, these next few Sundays. We're going to be going over different Judges and different stories in the Old Testament. But friends, I know our time is getting close to ending here. So we are going to leave it at that. But I want to hear from you. So does Pastor Lori. Let us know how JL really kills Sisera. Because we'd love to hear from you, friends.